All right, good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday again. Wall Street Jesus here. Saturday Sweep Series. Another fantastic week in the markets and stocks. Still some jitters out there. People worrying uh, that we've come too far too quick. And I'm sure we have. Uh, but we'll go back to last week and what we spoke about. Uh, that I guess the frame of mind, the, the mentality you need to have right now um, if you're hoping to take advantage of what's taking place here, uh, you can't be afraid of losing, uh, especially if you've been in this bull market, been riding this bull market. Uh, this is not the time to be afraid to give back some profits because uh, this is fun. This is fun. OK, and we got to understand that um, at the end, when the music stops, uh, there's a good possibility that you're going to get caught in at least something. And that's what you got to factor in. If you haven't already, uh, you need to start thinking about that. If you've moved to the sidelines um, completely, uh, you've missed out on some easy, quick and sometimes big money out there. Uh, so I've learned my lesson throughout my career that it was foolish for me to move to the sidelines just because I think the market has, has gone too high. All right. And, and so rather than doing that, uh, if it meant sizing down, putting on protection, exactly what we've been talking about. Uh, definitely got into it a little more last week and the week before, um, I want to tell you guys about the Tuesday webinar that we got coming up. Lucci and I are doing a webinar during the week on Tuesday. Uh, we're bringing on a member uh, who's a member of the steam room who knows the game. All right. I, I wouldn't say I don't know him well enough to say he's some sort of expert, um, but knows the game of trading and is familiar with putting on protection and how, he does that for himself. He's going to explain to every one of us uh, a couple of ideas of how, uh, especially on the option side or even on the equity side, options. Right now, I told you, listen, I'm an equities guy, diehard stock guy throughout my whole career. Okay, That's where I felt most comfortable. Uh, that's what I've traded the majority of times. But I think now is one of the best times to look to utilize the options game, okay? Whether it's directional bets, whether it's looking to protect or hedge an account, if you're loaded on the long side right now in equity land, you're nuts if you don't have some sort of protection and taking advantage of some sort of put action to hedge your, your account your portfolio, your positions, whatever the hell you want to call it. All right. And let me tell you something, right? And it's been this way. Protection is cheap. It will not stay that way. Okay. Trust me, it will not remain cheap. And then when you're scrambling to put on protection, you're going to get robbed. All right. And at that point, the wheels usually come off. Uh, and we're close to a tradable low and it's going to make you dizzy anyway. But, you know, you should be looking at that stuff now, in my opinion, if you haven't already. Um, and again, if you're just sizing down, that's protection in itself. So there are a ton of different ways uh, you can take a cautious approach and still participate, still look to take advantage of this market. Uh, but trust me, coming from a player here and myself, I'm... I'm around, I mean, I'm in the game since 97. 98 is when I really started to get my feet wet in this game. So I've seen bull runs. I've seen disaster corrections. I've seen it all, okay? I'm not going to say I can go back to the 87 crash and all that jazz, but I've been through the Asian contagion, the tech bubble, the bull market, tech boom, the internet boom, okay? All that stuff. And... Like I said, I learned early on that if you try to outsmart this game and beat price to the punch, you're going to pull your hair out of your head. All right? And what I mean by that is this. what, In other words, 
you could have been on the sidelines throughout a good chunk of this rally. Let's be honest. Okay. I mean, let's pull up a simple chart of, I mean, what do you want to look at? The Qs? Because a lot of you guys trade tech. All right. This is the daily on the left here. This is an intraday chart. This is the daily on the left side. All right. And if you go back, I mean, this thing has been hot for a while. Now there's been pulls in between, but you could have missed a good chunk of money being made throughout this bull market if you tried to outsmart price. All right. And coming from a flow guy, you know, I live and die by flow and you guys know that. Unfortunately, there may not be any signs that the music's ready to run out in flow either. Actually, there probably won't be. I mean, I've seen many of times the market has rolled over and then the flow rolled over as the process started to happen, not before. Okay, so like I said, I think the mentality right now is exactly what we were harping on last week. Okay, you want to enjoy the ride. Okay, you want to size down. You want to be comfortable. You don't want to be stressed out on any little downtick intraday. That's another thing I see a lot. I see, you know, one little fade on an intraday basis. And already people are calling for the death of the rally. So you want to be sized appropriately enough to where you're not stressing yourself out. You're, you're okay with getting caught. Nobody likes to lose money, but you got to understand it's a part of this game. You can't look at every, the last of your trades and judge your trading performance on that. Okay. This is, this has been a bull market for quite some time now. And if you've been trading the right way and the right way, in my opinion, is on the long side. Okay. And didn't get cute trying to short this bull there's a good chance you made a decent amount of money. When this bull market comes to an end, at some point, you're going to give some profits back. Net, net, you made a good amount of money. And that's the way you got to look at it. Just like the wise guys, you see their strategy, how they like to roll, right? We talk about that all the time. They roll up, they roll out, they roll up, they roll out. Knowing that there's a good possibility the likelihood, the last time they do roll, they're going to get caught. It's not like they're selling, a, a, a pressing a button, sell all, and they're just liquidating everything before a name rolls over. So think about it. If they feel they aren't smart enough to do that, why would you think you are? You know, they look to milk the trend, roll up, roll out, roll up, roll out, on the way, taking profits, right? Sizing down as things push higher, but continuously keeping some money in the game for as long as it lasts. And right now we see that in flow. We were talking about this Friday. It's really a beautiful thing because right now, and there's another thing we were talking about, if you remember last week, what the flow looks like right now, what they're doing in, in the option world on the sweeper side, they're just basically they're sizing down by playing a little different than they used to play. In other words, they used to like to take, you know, decent amount of contracts, lay some big premium. And you see those, you know, big bull missiles, as we like to call them, right? Where they lay a ton of wood. They, they're not doing much of that right now. What they're doing is they're going out of the money. They're buying cheaper premium calls. And they're just splashing the, across the board, everything up and down. Spy, yeah, let's go out of the money. We'll buy these spy calls for 25 cents. Cues, buy some cues. You know, we get, we get, we get new highs next week. Roll up, roll out, buy some more. So if you think about it, think about how much money these guys have made 
throughout this bull market. Like, think about the size we were seeing for those of you who have been a part of this webinar or a member of this team. Think about the size we were seeing post-election, after the Trump election. Remember the size of those orders? Like, now it's, it's different. Now you're seeing maybe more on the contract size, but just less premium. And, and that's their mentality right now. You know what? We're going to get caught at some point in time, but all it is is we're giving back a little bit of profit. Okay, and since they've been doing that, think how much that has benefited them by doing that rather than just moving to the sidelines. Okay, and what else, what else are they doing? You, you think they, they're not, Concerned about protection? We see protection all the time. All the time we see protection. We see these big blocks of puts going off out of nowhere. They really, it doesn't even look like they make sense because they're getting long names in that particular group. And that, well, it makes sense. I'm saying the puts look strange in a sense because they're buying puts on an ETF where they're going crazy on the spec side in the calls and in the individual names. But that's them protecting, you know, that's them protecting what they have. Also, we see a lot of stock replacement, meaning players who own equity size positions in individual names on the equity side, they're selling big portions of their stock and replacing it with calls. Okay, so they have less principal at risk. It's almost like they can manage their risk. They got a stop loss on it. So we're seeing all that as well on top of all this speculative type action. Okay, so don't think they're not planning or prepared for when the music stops. Like That's what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. The regular jabroni out there, the trolls on Twitter, you know, the last batch of calls that I post on Twitter that go south. You know, ah, oh, see, they got caught. They lost them. They don't care about that stuff. You can't play this game being scared of a loser. It's no different than, you know, any other time you're playing this game. So, again, we're going to get into a little more depth as far as measures you can take. Okay, I'm sure... Uh, Lucci and Ron is the guy who we're bringing on has stuff a little more clever too. If you're interested where you can look at the Greeks on the option side, if you're into that sort of thing and get a gauge of how much you'll need to protect or how much, you know, how much you protection you have to put on for to have a certain exposure, that sort of thing. All right. So we'll get more in depth on that on Tuesday. All right. But today that's, I want to talk about basically, again, harping on the mentality we were talking about last week, because you're going to need that mentality. And then, you know, just go into a couple of examples for, because I get a lot of questions. I guess some newer people on the webinar. Uh, there were a couple of great examples of how you can look to take advantage of flow, both day trading and swing trading. It's, it's very simple. If you look at it in a simple way, if you look to complicate things on your end by getting too clever, getting too greedy or whatever the case may be, obviously you can make a mess out of anything. But when it comes to flow, if me, if I, if I can easily get a read off the flow and know how to interpret it for my style, any single one of you can. Okay. So I'm a simple guy and I just want to point out um, a couple examples. You know, last week, Friday, uh, a couple of examples in particular of how, you know, flow can be, again, not overall flow, but certain aspects of sweeper activity can be a huge asset for a particular trading style. All right. And we'll go over some, uh, some of the action. Again, listen, we have a lot of earnings coming up. Okay. And what we've been seeing too, uh, we're, we're seeing some sell on the news out there, okay? But the interesting part about that is, is uh, not everything, 
But a lot of the names where they sell on the news, they end up coming right back to buy again. So it's almost like they feel like they're getting a gift if these things sell off post earnings. And I think that's a better thing for us rather than these things just gapping up and going, you know, like this Netflix, for example, if everything decided to do that, you know, there's not going to be too many opportunities left. All right. So we'll go over uh, some of the action Friday, some of the names that have earnings that you guys may be interested in what we're seeing as far as the um, overall flow there as well. All right. Let me just get into very quickly um, a couple examples. Day trading, in my opinion, is I wouldn't say the the easier of the two trading between swing trading and day trading or sweeper activity, um, but it's easier to manage. Okay, it's easier to manage because very simply put, you're out as soon as you think you're wrong. Okay, you're not looking to swing for the fences. That comes almost by accident at times. Okay, and it's pretty easy to manage your risk where when you're swing trading positions and holding overnight and holding multiple positions, there's more you have to look to control. Okay. There's only so much that I can help you with that. The only thing I can really stress to you guys is what, you know, what I, and I've had the experience of seeing other traders who trade professionally look for in the flow and how they utilize that. All right. So let's take a, a quick example of action on Friday. There were several. Now you had a hot, a hot market again. Okay. But it's no different in day trading. It's no different um, because in a hot market, sometimes when the market's up too much, it's even worse for my style of day trading, you know, cause you guys know me. I don't want to chase something up three bucks and, you know, look into what scalp 40 cents off that, you know, I'm looking for that change in trend, change in momentum. That's where I feel the sweeper activity is my best asset. So it's really no different that the market market was hot Friday. Sometimes that could even be a bad thing. All right. But let's take this um, Yelp. This is a daily. Wait a second. Oh, I don't want a daily. What am I doing here? All right, we'll take the one minute. All right. Okay, so this is a Yelp daily chart on the left, and this is a one-minute intraday chart, just so you get an idea. All right. So coming into the day, you can see Yelp pretty much caught in some consolidation here. Okay, a little gap up with the market to start the day. All right, but no big deal compared to some of the other things out there. A little bit higher. Um, basically, honestly, I don't even think it was. I think it was up very little. Yeah, because it was up a buck, and that's pretty much what it ran. So, let me show you exactly what went on there, so you know. All right, and basically give you a play-by-play -play of exactly what happened. And like this is textbook. Okay, there are a ton of sweepers out there, right? Throughout the day, like individual, <clears throat> individual sweepers. It's, it's not about that. Okay. It's about that. If you're using it in addition to what you're looking at. Okay. You've heard me say this many times. If you have high confidence in technical analysis, all right, you love to look at charts. You've been successful. You've made money. I wouldn't be, I'd be the last person to tell you, throw out, throw that out the window. If you have confidence in making money with that. Okay. If you haven't found success, I would tell you to throw it out the window. Okay. But a ton of traders in the steam room day in, day out, <clears throat> and they're really good at it. Use technical analysis with the flow and find success. Okay. So if you see a sp sporadically a sweeper here and there, you see them in Apple, you see them in Facebook, you'll see them in a Tesla, NVIDIA, very common, okay? If they're at certain spots technically that you like and you were looking for an entry, you can use that as an indicator of entry, okay? But for me, who 
just basically is utilizing the sweeper activity in itself. The only technicals I'm looking at, they're not even considered technicals, is I'm looking for that change in trend. So I'm looking for consolidation or weakness, okay, preferably not too weak. I'm not a big fan of that heavy selling pressure, okay? I'm looking for something that's dead and the sweepers can inject life into. Make sense? Right? Something sitting there not doing a damn thing, and then all of a sudden, I'm getting tipped off that sweepers are coming in, tipping me off that something bigger may be in the cards. That's in simple English what I'm looking for. What is this? Someone has not allowed to enter the webinar. What do you want me to do? What are they telling me here? All right, so here's what happened on the uh, Yelp. Look at this, it keeps popping up. Get out of here. Hold on. Okay, so at 1018, right? January 26th is Friday, so I make sure I have the right thing. This looks like the right thing. You get a small bull sweep. In February, 46 calls, buck 89. Okay, small contracts, decent wood, whatever the case may be. That right there, simple interpretation. Again, if you're looking at Yelp already as a day trader, you like the spot, you can jump the gun and, and trade it off this order. Okay, if you were eyeing Yelp coming into the day and you see something like this, you can jump the gun and already, if you're day trading, start to look to get involved. If you're trading all just the sweeper activity, this here is basically a heads up. Okay, start taking a look, pull up the chart at Yelp, pull up, you know, uh, the, your trade orders, get them ready, what you're looking, your size, what you would be looking at, where you would stop yourself out, that whole sort of thing. Preparation and a heads up is what this order simply means to me. Right? Pretty simple. Yelp, add. So let me just get you the time so you get an idea. Okay? This is, again, this is blueprint. Some happen quicker, some take longer. But this is when this was just perfectly set up even time-wise, where it allowed you time. So 1018, you got the heads up. 1021, okay, three minutes later, you got sweepers adding, right? Yelp add, another sweep, weekly 43 calls. So now what just happened here? We saw one little sweeper, right, take a bite. Then what was it, three, four minutes later, Another sweeper, little guy, sneaks in. The first one was in Febs. This guy's hitting weeklies now that expire that day, right? January 26th weeklies, January 26th. So he's buying weeklies that expire that day. That right there for me now is confirmation that this Yelp, there's a good possibility of Yelp being in play. In other words, these guys either are front running some sort of rumor chatter or simply more buying that's coming in. Guys, I can't tell you, and you could ask any member of the steam room right now more than ever, how many sweepers front run these size orders that come in. It's getting out of control, out of control. You'll see a, just a small harmless sweeper come in and then four minutes, sometimes even a minute later, boom. Huge block, and he's got to pay up. Okay, so that's what that tells me right there. Okay, first sweeper took a stab, Feb calls, gave me a heads up, got me looking at the name where maybe I wasn't even looking at the name. I wasn't. Now the second sweeper adds in weeklies that expire the same day. They're looking for this thing to be in play today. So that, that comes a couple minutes later at 1021. I don't know if you guys could see that right there, 1021. A couple minutes later, I think it was 1018 the first one or 1016, I said. Then you got this. Two minutes later, a 
there's the size. So now a block comes in, Feb 46 calls, 347 grand, comes in at 1023. And at that point, you should see a reaction in the name. Okay. Figures I got. What, what do I got? West Coast timing on here on the bottom. This is why the thinker swim drives me nuts. I'm telling you, it drives me nuts. So how am I gonna do 1021? Is yeah, so there's okay. So basically here. I think it's West Coast time. All right, so this is where that sweeper activity occurred. You understand? Not up here, not the name was hot up three bucks already with action all over the yard. Down here, this thing barely had a pulse. And that's where these little sweepers were sneaking in. This is the bar off the block. All right, so that it's that simple, honestly. That simple. I'm not trying to be a jackass, make it sound easier than it actually is in real life, but it's that simple. Now what you need to do, okay, I'm going to show you actually one that didn't perform like this that I, I played that I felt had the same capabilities, right? Because they don't always do this. A lot of them do, but not always, okay? But basically what you need to do is you need to have some sort of exit strategy as a day trader, not only on the upside, but on the flat to downside. Okay, what happens if the momentum never comes into the Yelp? What happens if there's no additional buying or chatter, rumor, whatever the hell they're looking to catch? Okay, and that's got that's your exit strategy. There's a, a lot of things you can do on the way up, depending on what you're playing on the equity side. You can raise a stop. I know a lot of people like to move the stop to break even after they get this pop. And they're looking to milk something like this. So then it's a no-lose situation, basically. I Myself and a lot of traders like to take that pop when we get it. Or, you know, ride an ATR stop. There's, there's a lot of things you can do with it. On the option side, it, it gets a little more tricky. Because you got to be careful with the liquidity of the option, the, the spread, whole bunch, the whole nine yards. They, there could be a webinar done on that alone. All right. But on the equity side, it's kind of simple. It's just a preference thing. All right. So let me um, let me take you to one of the stocks that did not catch the heat that I thought there was a possibility of. I got to find the. Um, OK. This is Xnet. I don't know. What is it? Some Bitcoin piece of garbage. You guys probably know the name. Okay. Where we, a lot of us have day traded this name and made some decent money on this thing before. So as much as it's a piece of garbage, it's been a decent performer day trade wise. All right. Basically the, the, the backstory of this goes on Thursday, there was a small sweeper. Um, got a decent reaction out of the stock. I didn't trade it. I had to run out. Uh, but whatever the case, that's this Thursday. Okay. So closed up a little bit from there. Now we go into Friday. Friday, <coughs> we see a small sweeper, similar to the Yelp, a small sweeper come in and take a nibble. Okay. Now, Two things. One, there was action the day before, so you you could have react. You know, you could have jumped the gun right there on the on the first sweeper, thinking, "Whoa, they were buying this thing yesterday. Maybe the heat's coming today." You know, that type of thing. Or you could have waited for another one. There was another small. And let me pull it up. It'd be a lot easier if I could pull it up. If I can find it, should be. Uh... Let's see. <clears throat> 
January 26th. This is it. Okay. Yeah. So I, can you guys make that out here? This was the sweeper on Thursday, the day before. Okay. 1230, Feb 2nd, $16 calls, little guy, um, and had a decent reaction off it. It was just one. Here's the Friday. Okay. So again, small sweep, getting my eyes on the name. You could jump the gun there because there was some buying the day before. That was at 1028. And then the sweeper added a couple minutes later, 1031, added another 250. Okay. So this qualifies. For me, I want to own this thing. I want to own this thing. Okay. Again, it, there weren't weeklies involved like the Yelp. So maybe they weren't looking for the, the, the move on Friday per se. But still, I want to, it's worth a shot that there may be further buying coming in. All right. So this again, 1028. Let's go to my California time on Thinkorswim to make me dizzy. 1028. That would be in 728. Okay. So here it is. Okay. So the action comes in right here. So this is where you want to look for that entry, right? Now, you get that pop, but you could see how there was just no legs after that, right? Quick wash, pop again, quick wash, a lot of chop. So a lot of times this is what the loser will look like when you're day trading. Okay, now if you want all of, if you all of a sudden, if you're solely a day trader and you say to yourself, oh, you know what? That action, I'm gonna hold it just because I didn't make money on it. I'm gonna turn it into a swing trade, even though I'm just a day trader. That's where it becomes a mess. Or this thing, like it did, I think it did. Yeah, okay. So it started heading south later in the day. You see here? Late afternoon, hours after this and you say to yourself you know i'm just gonna hold this thing and write it down all the way into the close just because i don't want to take a scratch right i don't want to take a small loss i don't feel like it in this market you may get away with it the next day it may run but if you're day trading this is the stuff you got to try to avoid okay you shouldn't your account should have a decent amount of these these small scratch wins, small scratch losses, because one Yelp will make up for the whole bunch of them. And Yelp is not even, sometimes you see these things go, par, you know, you get lucky, you get these things go parabolic sometimes. You know, so the big winners come almost, again, accidentally. So that's honestly, that's what a winner and loser looks like day trading. There's no other intangibles. There's nothing, no added wrinkles in there. Now, depending on, again, what you're trading, your style and all that, you have to find a way to come up with some sort of exit plan around that. And if you don't think you have or can form an edge of that, then I, I don't know what to tell you because there's nothing out there, in, and I've been in the game, there's nothing out there that's going to trigger momentum, instant momentum like that, out of nowhere. There's nothing. And that's why, guys, I like those dead issues, you know? Because when you have, like, a Netflix running, and don't get me wrong, there's sweepers cashing in on Netflix all day long. But when you get a Netflix running, there's already momentum. There's already juice there. You understand what I'm saying? It's already in bull mode. For me, I like, again, a stock just sitting, laying in the weeds, doesn't have a pulse, basically. And I'm getting tipped off. That juice is coming in. All right. On the swing trade side, okay, because I get a lot of questions about this. And it's easier said than done. But, again, this is... This is stuff you have to try to figure out if you're looking to have any success in this game. All right. 
I want to take JD in particular. And there, there's a lot of them. Where listen, we're in a bull market. Okay. I don't want I'd be the last person to tell you that there's that everybody who's bullish is not making money out there. Okay, you guys know me better than that. All right, but for me, I trade the same way no matter what the hell the market conditions are. Okay, we're in chop. There's just going to be less stuff to trade, but I still trade the same way. And if you're swing trading through chop, again, less setups per se, where you got to be more disciplined, but you trade the same way. All right, so JD, and we've seen so many of these things like this. This is the beauty. Like, this is where flow can be an asset, I think. Okay. Fang, all that stuff. They go up every day. They go up every day. They see flow. They go up every day. Every jabroni, every guru on Twitter, they're all patting themselves in the back. Buy Facebook, buy Baba, buy Amazon. Give me a break already. Okay, we know it. We know it. I get it. All right, and I'm being honest with you. Even the flow, you'll hear, ooh, big bet, Netflix. We know it already. They're in bull mode. They go higher. They're going to continue going higher until the music stops. We know it. All right? But you don't want to get in bad habits. Okay? You want to make money, but you don't want to get in bad habits. And pretending flow had an influence on a swing trade in Netflix when the stock goes up every day is foolish. If that makes any sense. Okay. Where I know flow could be a huge asset. Okay. Is on a play like JD before it got to this point. All right. We were seeing, if you guys remember, we were seeing so much just spec action in JD. Remember I was getting a lot of questions and they were trade worthy. Don't get me wrong. They were trade worthy. You could have you the quick trade was there in JD, but if you were hoping for more, you got ran over several times to the point where a lot of people didn't want to own JD recently because of that. But something different happened. All right. All that spec flow we were seeing, something changed on one day. And all of a sudden, there was a sharp looking real bet in JD. No out of the money, 12 cent calls piling up contract wise. One razor sharp looking sweep with some small sweeper activity around it, confirming that some Sharpie is placing a big bet on JD. Placing a bet on the name. All right. And a lot of you guys know which order I'm talking about. If you don't, I can find that quick. Um, I got to go to my personal probably. No, hold on. It was a June bet. And at the time, you know, it's further out, not weeklies like we've been seeing in JD. Oh, let me go. Yeah, here it is. Uh, yeah. So this is the bet right here. Okay. Those of you who are following JD, you know, last couple months know what type of action it was catching. Remember, a week out, two weeks out. Like I said, cheap premium. This guy here sweeps multiple exchanges, opening bet, 1.4 million. This is just a one order. There were other orders around it, like I said. But this was the one to basically make the game plan around. Okay, so now as a swing trader, this is where you got to make that decision, not get caught in the middle. As a swing trader, you got to say to yourself, okay, what am I looking to do here? Am I looking for that quick trade in JD? Okay, that basically all that other flow was good for. Am I looking for just that momentum to come in and I want to just flip it maybe hopefully in the next couple of days and that's all I'm looking for? or Am I looking for that big break? And I finally got that big bet, sharp bet with time as proof that somebody sharp is looking for the same thing. Okay. And again, at the time, you know, 
JD was stuck in this menagerie, if you guys remember, right? This downtrend. So, you know, right away, most traders who trade the name thinking, oh, this stock is a disaster. Right back to new lows. Every time I bought up here, I got my ass handed to me. But the sweeper activity was different. The sweeper activity was different. Somebody was jumping the break. That's basically what was happening. And again, it's a bull market. And bull markets help with this sort of thing. Okay? When it was 2016 and it was mostly chop and there was breakouts were the worst trade and nothing was really breaking out, this type of move was impossible to even find the setup for, let alone catch. But in bull markets like we are now, in my opinion, there this is where on a swing trade platform, this is where wise guy sweepers can provide the biggest asset as far as a swing trade. Okay, the short-term trades in any market, like I said, they work. You know, some don't, but more than that, they will. But it's catching the big breakout before eyeballs are on it, before people want to own JD. That's where I think wise guy sweepers can provide the biggest bang. All right. And that's exactly what happened. It went from JD, nobody wanted to own because they've got so burnt, to now, I, it, there's like news every day on JD now. The flow has exploded. There's sweeper activity all over the yard. And I mean, this thing's gone. And good thing before earnings, you'd even have to take on that risk. All right. And that's, you know... Just a perfect segue. That's the problem we run into now with earnings. It's going to get in the way of a good chunk of these setups. That's the problem. All right. It may be, you may be okay with it. You understand the risk, you know, risk reward wise, it's worth it. You got enough time on the calls you're looking to play. So you're going to hold through a quarter. Because listen, if, if you're going to go six months out, sometimes a year out, you're going to have to hold through earnings. What are you going to do? Right? I mean, we get sell before earnings every time. You just have to be appropriately sized and understand the risks that go in with it. And again, with options, in my opinion, it's perfect. Because very easily, simply put, you could just put in what you're willing to lose and that's your stop loss. How many times have you heard me say that? And that's an easy solution. All right. One example of that that I like really hasn't caught that big bet yet, but it's almost like you could see it coming unless the move happens before that. Um, let me go here a second. So you got a better clean look here. This BMRN. What a disaster this thing has been, huh? How many people have been trying to catch the move? Honestly, raise your hand. You've been trying to catch the big break in this BMRN. Tell the truth. Don't lie. You're going to have to show up in confession on Sunday. This BMRN might be even worse than the JD. No? So, but again, perfect candidate. Why? If there's some signs of sweeper activity coming in, okay, if the chances, like I said, if the probability, the odds were what, 50-50, he either breaks from here or heads south, you know, stuck in this consolidation. If there's sweeper activity involved, they tilt the odds in, in that favor. That's the edge. So we're seeing sweeper activity and nothing huge in size, but multiple sweepers. My favorite bet was July. What were they? July 95s? July 95s, I think they were. The initial sweeper. 
And, th- you know, this is stuck in consolidation. Oh, so the point of the story, I guess, hijack. you got earnings, I think, February 22nd, right, guys? February 22nd. So that's, you know, that's in the way. Again, if you go out to July, you're going to have to hold through earnings anyway, size appropriately. All right. But that's, see, this, this, as far as a position, position trading and swing trading, whatever the hell label you want to put on it. All right. Because there's, there's a difference, you know, there's a big difference. Some people, that's what they want. They want to look for the big moves. The problem is here's the, here's the pitfall to avoid. Okay. If you can avoid this pitfall, it becomes easier on the swing trading side. Don't get stuck in the middle. What I mean by that is if you're going for the break here, then go, don't get cute. You go to July and that's what you focused on. If you're going to play Febs and you need to get lucky, then you're going to get caught in the middle. It, you know what I mean? It may not happen before then. Now, you may get a little pop in it, right? You could get a move. The move can start by then. But if you're holding for a bigger move, if that short-term move fails, you're done. So that's why I'm saying there's, there's, that's the in-between. You're either looking for that short, short-term trade where you get that pop and you're taking profit and moving on, or you're looking for the bigger move, and there are things you have do you need to do to catch that bigger move. If you try to have your cake and eat it too, how's that saying go? Is that how the saying goes? You guys know what I'm talking about. You know, if you're trying to get the best of both worlds just because you think you are who you are, that's where you're gonna have trouble on the swing trade end, especially in options. All right, but that's you know that's where on the swing trade side, this is where for me sweepers provide the biggest edge. Okay, and then I see you guys mentioning names. There are those quick turnover trades all over the yard. They're all over the place. Okay, you you can find them with sweeper flow. You can find them without sweeper flow. They're all over the place. Somebody mentioned shop. You know, I mean these things. They're just all flying. You know, shop, same thing. Shop, court, sweeper activity. Boom. Didn't even waste any time. They're all these quick trades. I mean, that's more of the market right now. The market's hot. You know, the market's hot. Uh, another beauty with the uh, setup, and this is before really the market got hot, hot. You know, this DWDP. You know, kind of stuck in this for a bit. Caught that nice action out. What about the steel names? You know, steel dynamics. What the hell? Who's calling me? These Vegas guys call me all day long trying to get me to buy ball games. These handicappers. Steel dynamics is another beauty. Did a whole bunch of nothing for the whole year. Yeah, how do you know which which move here the breakout for real? I wouldn't have anything to base it on. Then all of a sudden you see the sharpest sweepers it's seen all year in this thing. Tune. So it gets your eyes on things early. You know, there's other flow out there that is just momentum type action, and we're seeing a lot of it. Uh, but this this stuff is the goods. You heard me, you know, mention that. Oh, hold on a second. I'm stuck. I just ran over my headset. There we go. Um, you know, there's other momentum type action that's out there that's valuable for a quick turnover trading, but this is the goods. All right, let's go quickly. So anybody have any questions on this? I'm not talking about individual names now. I'm just talking about this because I get a lot of questions um, on the trading aspect. And again, you could go in depth. There are other things you can add and do. And you learn along the way. Um, but this is the basics when it comes to my experience trading off this stuff. Okay, this is what I try to get members looking at 
first and foremost, and then trying to apply everything else they've learned and know because all that stuff is valuable stuff. You know, but this is the basics. This is the, the basics, the blueprint, I should say, not the basics, the blueprint. Uh, Dean is asking, new to Steam Room, why do some sweeps make the ticket board? Good question. All right, so Dean is asking. Let me go to it. Here's what Dean is asking. Oh, geez. All right. Dean is asking this board here. Why do some trades hit the board and others don't? Okay. This is basically, we call it the tote board. Dean, it's almost like this board's a scanner. Okay. A scan set, right? With a criteria. And I don't know if you are familiar. I've mentioned before that personally, me. I have no set criteria. Like I get a question, questions a lot. Uh, what's your cri what criteria do you look for in flow? What I'm basically looking at just the whole flow. You understand? I'm not looking at any set criteria because I don't want to miss anything. You know what I mean? I want to see any little sign of aggressive activity, even if it may not end up being anything. I want to see it happen early on. Okay, so the, the difference is this here, this board is set for a certain criteria. If I if this board was open to all of the flow, Dean, people would be dizzy. Like you, you have no idea what I look at on a day to day basis. You probably hear me mumble on audio all day long. Oh, my God, I can't keep up with this flow like Friday. I can't keep up with it because the tape is just too fast. It's insane. That's what the board will look like, and we'd probably overheat the steam room. So this basically is a good reference to some of the larger action that comes in, the repetitive action that comes in, okay? Because here's the, the, the main difference that you got to understand. Like Yelp, you see that size bet? That got up here, right? The two little nibbles prior to that that came before that big bet did not because they were small under the radar in size make sense and there's so much of that out there that to set a specific criteria and have that information hit the board is just way too much we've thought of a couple ways to work around it, um, what we're looking to do is something where I click on and it moves to a pin board. You understand? So even if I got to click on my commentary, I can click on it, move that Yelp sweeper that I saw, the little one, up there. And if I need to remove it, if it doesn't develop into anything, I can remove it. Sort of that type of thing. Okay, but yeah, good question. That's that's the main thing. And you know, again, this all the board, you know, this one means nothing unless you know what's happening with the flow, right? You see a big order, it could hit the board here, Dean. And if it's tied to stock, in my opinion, it's it's useless. So the board is not really gonna tell you that. I think that's the benefits to being a member is because I can share that with you. You know, you need the human eye there to catch stuff like that. Um, okay, good. I'm, I'm glad that uh, answered your question. Uh, Ram is saying in momentum is momentum different with big sweeps, but 30 days versus 120 days. I don't know what you mean by momentum uh, Ram, but basically when you got, you know, legitimate sweeper activity, like here's another one, okay, just quickly, Xilinx. This was so interesting on Friday. Another name a lot of us play. Okay, so Xilinx, again, the daily on the left here, 
Here's the daily. I could even blow it up. Remember, earnings gap down. And um, this is the intraday. So now Xilinx, what happened was you have, in my opinion, this one sweeper could be a syndicate, a group out there, come in, start sweeping the Feb, what were they, 73 and a half, something like that. He's, he pays 90 cents. So just like the Yelp, the small sweep, his first sweep was at 90 cents. He comes back, he pays 99 cents, like two minutes later. He comes back again, he pays a buck. So all of a sudden, now you see this guy sweeping Xilinx Feb calls. Okay. And he's basically being so aggressive. He's running up that contract all by himself, sweeping multiple offers. Make a long story short, he started at 90 cents and he paid up to, I think it was a buck 70 when he was all said and done. Okay, and when that happens, this is the type of momentum you're going to get off that. Because once people, you know, you got market makers figuring that out, they got a hedge. You know, people start seeing the volume start to swell and the Zyling is called. I think it was like 12,000 he ended up buying when it was all said and done. And it started off with a simple, harmless little sweep, or I should say, batch of sweeps. Okay, so this is the momentum it's going to provide for that day. Okay, this is what you're looking as a day trader to take advantage of and then manage your risk along the way. You know, maybe you get a little help from the market and everything else along the way, raise a stop, that sort of thing. Or you could be happy with just, again, just that. Okay, but depending on, you know, the quality of the action, really is what you should determine whether it's swing trade worthy or not. And yeah, you know, that's a different, that's a different thing, you know, for day trading, you really don't have to pay attention to that, but for swing, for swing trade reasons, you know, you want to start looking at other things like is the stock up over the last month? Has it run too much already? And, and things like that. So it depends on what type of momentum you're looking for. Short-term momentum, there's going to be nine out of 10 times worth buying like this. You know, longer-term momentum, you know, you really, you want that quality of action b to be there. Um, so there's a real buyer there, in other words. He can come back. There can be that group coming back. You know, sometimes you get news. Sometimes you get rumors, the whole nine yards. Uh, there was quality action, for example, in CSX, that was probably, that was the best action on Friday, the CSX. And this is a name, by the way, that has already seen a ton of action, if you guys remember. Ton of action. It's sort of a ton of uh, sweeper activity when the transportation names just started to heat up. Remember that? This one, the UNP and all that stuff. And then the CEO dies. Literally, the CEO died. They start sweeping the living daylights out of that weakness. Rallies basically to highs. Yeah, highs. And then just recently, you had another little breather. And then Friday, you have a, bull, a bullish risk reversal with a player selling puts to buy calls. Sweeper activity all over the yard again. And you got, you know, this is what you get intraday. And as far as the swing trade, she's been money this thing. So this, you know, there's different, obviously there's different types of action. You know, when you see quality like this, yeah, this is a lot more important than uh, action in like an X net as far as the swing trade is concerned. Uh, but day trade, you know, when you see aggressive activity, a lot of times you're going to get some sort of momentum there. It's The question is, how long does that momentum sustain and last? That's basically the, the question. There's going to be, that name is going to come to life when you see that type of buying. No matter what. All right, let's quickly look at some of uh, Friday's action, and then uh, I'll take a couple of questions on 
some of your names. Uh, yeah, let's. This are all. For, these are some of Friday's sweepers. Uh, we'll start from the top up. How about win? Huh? Craziness. Um, you got MGM, MGM, and both MGM and LVS. Uh, also the other one, the old MPEL, MLCO saw some buying off the win weakness on Friday. Uh, this was a sweeper at MGM. You do have earnings there, keep in mind, uh, but you got a pretty big bet there, million-dollar sweep, March 39 calls. MGM has had uh, decent bull flow as well over the last weeks, months, uh, just like LVS, just like Win, just like uh, Boyd Gaming, which we've been talking about, all the casinos. Uh, but Win obviously caught that news, and it weighed on all these names. Uh, on Friday. All right. Uh, here's Intel. Post earnings could be rolling. Uh, April 55 calls there, 45 cents. AMD, some action there on Friday, February 2nd, $14 calls. They saw some sweeper activity. Uh, CB, cheap bet there. SYF, that's a financial that has seen some flow. Feb 40 and a half. Citigroup, some opening activity. This one might roll as well, roll out, meaning he had some weeklies. He's rolling them out to next week. Uh, the 81 calls. Uh, oop, what did I do? Oh, I flipped over the next screen. Uh, Microsoft, by the way, Microsoft is insane. Microsoft is insane. The flow in Microsoft is insane. They're just, I think they're going to sweep the, and have been, but they're just sweeping the living daylights out of this thing all the way till they release earnings. That's what's happened. Whether during the day it's up, down, sideways, crooked, there's sweeper activity all over the place on this thing. All over. There was one actually really, really good-looking bet. Again, you have earnings, but really, really good-looking bet. Uh, I posted on Twitter. You guys probably saw it. The April, it was an April sweeper. Really good-looking sweep. Um, but this thing's been on fire. Here's the daily on the left. You can see powerful push higher. Nice grind higher. You know what I mean? This, like, and you can see uh, this entry indicator on the bottom is basically... A measure, well, you know what it's, it's good for and what I use it for? I mean, that's um, entries as far as when something you may be chasing and when, you know, something actually looks a little better on the entry side. If you're looking for an entry on the name, it's not buy, sell signals. You know, everybody wants that. So, you know, Microsoft, for example, um, here, you can see here, pop. Uh, this entry indicator gets into the red. So that's a spot you want to wait for a breather. You get a little breather. You know, that's a better entry, that sort of thing. Uh, but, you know, it gets a little tricky because certain names, you got to adjust the parameters if they're too volatile and stuff. Uh, but look at look at this nice little grind higher. You know what I mean? Just a nice grind higher. And uh, the action's been absurd. So here, Feb 94, what happened? Feb 94 calls. Uh, there was other sweeper activity too, all day long. Apple, small, well, not too small, but a sweeper there for next week, 172 and a halves. Apples look like garbage, but you got earnings next week. Uh, Baba, another name, a lot of heat. This was a small weekly sweeper expiring that day. But Baba always catches sweeper activity. Let's see something. Uh, Avon's been seeing some flow. Probably catches flow. Pfizer. That was the one. Did any of you guys trade Pfizer Friday? Pfizer was the one. <clears throat> yeah, Maria, I figured you'd be all over that. That was just slap you in the face type action on Pfizer. Um Started right from the opening bell. Right from the opening bell and exploded. And again, Pfizer, another name that has seen 
bullish activity. There's definitely been bullish activity in Pfizer, but the action was a lot different Friday morning. It just, it didn't stop. It was almost like machine-like. Just kept buying and buying and buying. They're talking about someone, about buying someone out. Oh, Pfizer buying somebody out. Is that what you're talking about? Tim, you played that Pfizer? Jim, you're, you're talking about, no, no, I was talking to Tim, Tim, Jim. Tim, Jim, how many Tims and Jim? You're all Tim Jims, for Christ's sake. <laughs> That's okay. Um, Tim, are you swing trading it or you uh, day traded it? <laughs> Pfizer for Pepsi. Oh, uh, William, you cracked me up. Oh, swing trade. Yeah, so, and yeah, again, you know, these things, a lot of these dead names that are just, you know, seeing a huge uptick in flow and um, and breaking, you know, that's another reason. Like if that BMRN, there wasn't earnings in, in the middle, I would even, I would be swing trading it right now. But I got a couple of positions. I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. We'll see what it looks like early next week. Yeah, but you could just see the writing on the wall with the rest of this group here. Um, maybe we'll get a. What is this now? Let's see. Ani, you're in BMRN? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely in Tyson. Uh, oh, here, Pfizer. Yeah, this is the Pfizer. This was late afternoon. It was earlier sweeps in the morning, uh, paying cheaper. Let's see. What other action? Twitter. That was another one. I didn't trade Twitter. I didn't trade Twitter Friday. A lot of people did. Um, there was some sweeper activity early on, and she had a nice move. Ani saying he made two sticks in Twitter. Very nice. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I didn't. I was in, I guess, a couple other things and didn't really. Um, yeah, I saw a Citron on the Twitter. Uh, but that was nice and steady. Obviously, when the first batch of action came in, I didn't think this was coming. Uh, so that's probably why I didn't trade it. But nice, nice move there. Uh, you have earnings there as well. So be careful with these things into earnings. I think the best of both worlds, you make a little bit of money pre-earnings, take off risk, leave a piece, and who cares? Let it go. Maybe you get lucky. Um, but it's foolish, I think. To, there's a lot more risk you got to take on with earnings, obviously. Uh, what else? Twitter. Cisco, that's another name. Seeing a lot of activity constantly. And, you know, again, just look at this thing. Like, not many people talking about Cisco. It's just been in this, like, look at this grind here. And basically what we've been seeing in Cisco, they it almost seems like it goes week to week to week. They buy, in other words, they'll buy this week, they were buying for next week. Then next week, they start buying for the following week. And they've just been writing this thing. But extremely active for Cisco. And the quality of the action, guys, is not, you know, anything special. Not on all of them, on some of them. But it's just that spec money riding the wave, you know, the activity, just the pace of the activity. A lot of buying, a lot of buying. Uh, so Cisco, I mentioned. Yeah, so these are, you can see a lot of familiar names. Is this the one earlier? Here's one earlier in Pfizer, the 38 and a half, 48 cents. Sweeper there. Twitter, this was late. Twitter. Oracle, some action that came late in the day. As Boston Scientific saw some more activity. That also has seen action in the past. Oops. Hold on. BSX. But um, you had some news there. You could see this thing had a big gap up and um, moving again. And has seen some action throughout all this. BSX. Tim is saying he's swimming, uh, swinging BSX. Yeah. Nice action on uh, Friday again. Uh, Ani saying NEPT just read it's Joseph 
Edelman buying since December. Huh. That little, let me tell you something, this thing. If I knew what I knew now, not even talking about the performance, I'm talking about just, you know, what they are, what they do, and the type of action I would have been in this thing. Heavy. I really would have. Just to take a shot. They started buying this thing in the ones. It's three and change. They're selling puts. They're selling puts now. They're selling puts up here. They're selling puts. This thing's ridiculous. I didn't know this is a, a weed play. This is a weed play. I didn't know that. I thought it was some biotech. I was worried about maybe they got FDA coming. You know? I didn't know this was a weed play. But yeah, this NEPT, you guys know, we <clears throat> we took a look at the action. Um, I think it was even before, you know, before Christmas, we really started to talk about it. Uh, really hot. It really started to heat up out of this. See this here? Like there was some action down here, but out of this little sideways, the action really started to heat up, put selling, and yeah, it's, again, the action is continuing up here. They're still selling puts up here, which should put in a decent floor. Worth a look, man. But, you know, again, extended. That's the problem. Extended, but worth a look. Definitely worth a look. Uh, Maria saying WGO. Yeah, yeah. There was um there was some action in WGO, right? Um, into the weakness. It got hit because of the THO. Yeah, WGO was a nice move off uh, some action in the past. Here's the Xilinx guy. Look at the Xilinx guy I was telling you guys about. Uh, how do I get this off here? Oh, there you go. Can you see that on the bottom, bottom of the screen down here? 99 cents. That was the initial sweep. I Take a look where these things closed. They may have closed higher. When I last seen them, he was paying a buck 70. Or buck 70, buck 80, something like that. But take a peek. Uh, 90, 90, 99 cents he was, he was buying this thing. There's JD, uh, some small tack on action for next week. Uh, that could be uh, the following week. There was a lot of weekly activity in JD earlier in the week. I think it was Monday. So a lot of weeklies were rolling out in JD. Uh, huge move there. Huge move. All right. So that's some of the, um, that's some of the smaller sweepers. Well, not smaller. There's some size there. Um, Here's the CSX bull combo, by the way, that I was talking about. All right. So here you got the sweep, 57 and a half calls. Uh, that's at what? One or two o'clock? 213. You can see the size of that bet. Uh, here, 57 and a half calls. Here's the combo. So let me get this out of here. Hold on. So right here he sells the March 55 put for buck 39. Uh he collects a buck 39 and then utilizes that to buy the March 57 and a half calls for a buck 62 as a debit out of that. And oh by the way, this is the best part about it, right? This was one of the initial bets 1600 I think it, it traded 12,000 times, if I'm not mistaken. 12,000. Uh, Tim saying hit one. Oh, Xilinx hit 190s. Wow. So they more than doubled them. I mean, they basically doubled. He, by him, just off him. Uh, yeah, so this CSX, uh, take a peek to just double check, but I think it's 10 or 12,000 times this traded. Huge bull risky, some sweeper activity around it. Um, and look, you see the time of the bed here, 11 o'clock. The sweeper activity didn't come till later on, and that's what really, really got this thing hot. Uh, this was a nice winner. A couple of us caught this thing nice on Friday. Um, I think because it, it took its time, and a lot of times when they're slow to really get that big reaction, you can see, grinded higher. Uh, so 
11, right, right around here was that bull combo right here. And then sweeper activity started to come in over here, I think it was, providing even more juice. If I got these times correctly, I don't know what time they got me on down here. I mean, like Montana time. Uh, so that's the CSX combo. Really uh, good looking action. I got yellow still on my screen. One second. There we go. Uh, this is our trade alert. Some sweepers. We looked at sweepers. Here's some of the size call activity out there. Uh, again, not all open. So not all bought, but some of the size that was out there. MGM, we spoke about. PBR, that's another group this week. Brazil, I didn't even know about this. See, this is what I need more of, BRZU as a day trader. I need these things uh, intraday to take advantage of market moves. You know, I really got to brush up on that this year. Um, but make a long story short, this is the BRZU. Uh, to take advantage of EWZ, Brazil. Uh, Steven saying BRZU was his best day trade Friday. This thing, they started going bananas on EWZ, PB, or the Brazilian stuff. I think was was it Thursday morning? And uh, this thing just exploded. Exploded. Uh, but you could really see the heat coming in. It might have been Wednesday. One of these days it started. And then, you know, BRZU would have been a huge, huge winner. Uh, but they were buying EWZ. They weren't buying BRZU. They were buying EWZ and PBR, uh, which has been a solid energy name. Uh, Pfizer, there's some size there. That was the sweep, 7,000. VMC, that's another one. Um, Vulcan Materials. Now, on Friday, there was some big-time size there that – was um, a roll position adjustment. So basically, it looked like he closed the position, rolled into another size position. Okay. Um, and then on top of that, you had some smaller sweeper activity. Uh, prior to that, I think it was just a couple days ago. Let me see if I can get it. There was more action on this VMC. And you got earnings coming up there. So the smart thing to do would probably be trim some. I know a couple guys who are in this. That's why. Uh, uh, so here, here, here was the action on Friday. Six thousand May forty one forty five calls uh, open a new position. He closed the May one thirty fives. That was big size, and then there was an opening buyer. On the other one. So see, rolling a larger position than May 145 calls. And then there was some sweeper activity around it. Let me show you that. This is Jan 23rd. You got a uh, small sweeper there. 135s, Feb. 140s, Feb. So there's been some sweeper activity around that a couple of days prior, and you got a nice little bust out here. You know, same thing, breaking out of a whole lot of mess. Uh, also, MS, is it MSN? I think MSM, that was the other one that caught some action. Is it MSN? Is that, what's Marietta? I think it's MSN. Um, but the one, believe it or not, with the best action, is this S-U-M that you guys probably remember. You remember this S-U-M? Oh, M-L-M. Sorry. M-L-M. That's it. She didn't bust out yet, but nice little move here on um, the, this past week. S-U-M, the best action of the bunch. Materials name. And I'll show you exactly. They hit it initially. At the lows here. And it was a May sweep. Really good looking May sweep. 
Um, got a nice bump higher, breather, and then some smaller activity this past week and busted out. S-U-M is the symbol there. Yeah, it really was a missile in that S-U-M. Good looking order. Uh, for that name, that name doesn't catch any action. Any action at all. Uh, so when you see action in that name, you got to take notice. Oh, you know what I'll do? Hold on. Uh, but now it's a bit extended. Here's a Feb block. That was recently 123. This is the bet I'm talking about here, though. You know, sweepers, you never see sweeper activity in this name. May 30s. Look at that amount, too. That's a hefty sweep right there. Hefty sweep. Yeah, Jim um, is talking about that DBB. That's a metals ETF. I've never seen action in that thing. Caught some action on um, Friday. DBD. I never heard of it, to be quite honest, prior to Friday. Uh, and that's D. No, not DBD. DBB. I hit the wrong symbol. DBB. There it is. So that's at, at high, as you can see. And there was some unusual activity there on Friday. All right, let me see. Any other uh, names in particular or Friday's action? I think I pretty much, where am I? We got to Pfizer CSX was the best of the activity. But there was just, you know, there was a ton of action out there. Ton of action. MGM. Little dip buying in American Airlines. USG, um, that's a good-looking name, but you have earnings coming up there. That's that drywall play. They started buying around hurricane season, and she's looked really good. They started buying it back here. Yeah, yeah, Jim. The, that's the only way you can play... Um, ETF or even the thin names, you got to, yeah, I know if you like to size up, it's tough, but you got to put in what you're willing to lose, that sort of thing. And sometimes you get a little lucky with these things, you know, if you're trying to make, uh, if you're trying to catch a big move on these things, that's the only way to approach it. Um, because you're right. It's tough. It's tough. Any other way. Uh, this is the USG source some. Good action again this past week. One right into this weakness here, which was lovely. Right into this candle. And then caught another bet Friday. You got earnings on this stupid thing. You got earnings coming up. Otherwise, it, it finally gave you another entry. You know, there wasn't really another entry since this thing started catching action. Nice little dip there. But you know all these all these earnings plays you can keep an eye on post earnings, you know especially if there's weakness. A couple we had a couple names this week, like for example TXN. Okay, how many questions I would get regarding flow on TXN this whole trip up? Okay, where it was almost it wasn't playable anymore. And this thing just went straight up, so you had to wait especially with earnings coming, you can't play this thing. You know, and listen, if it gapped up and went again, what are you going to do? But you have to wait for another legitimate entry. This is it. This, this was it when it gapped down. She's already retracing. But, you know, you either wait for more flow or if you already are impressed with the flow and just looking for an entry in the name, you got to look for these things. You got to look for these things. I think that's the better mentality now, uh, especially as we go into earnings. And a lot of these things, man, they get bought right up again. You know, this ADSK, you remember, had that earnings debacle, you know, finally found the bottom, been catching action, grinding higher. So you, not all of them, but you get the opportunity again. You just got to be patient. You got to be patient. Um, but when, you're, when, you're, when your chart looks like this, like that TXN, and you're going into numbers, you're priced to perfection, you know? 
your price to perform. Let me look at this move into numbers here. Even a good quarter, it's got to be, they got to knock the bull out of the park, Netflix style. By the way, Netflix, and you, you rarely hear me talk about names that are up like this and that um, had earnings and just continued to move. But they, this, this still sweeper activity hitting the living daylights out of this thing. Yeah, now, I don't know what the hell you do with that now. But they're still, you know, they're still sweeping March, 300s. We saw a whole bunch of stuff on this. Uh, even weeklies. I don't think he cashed that weekly ticket expiring yesterday. He, what the hell did I do here? He was playing the 275s. Oh, yeah, that's right. He bought the first batch. He had a nice profit on. Then he bought it later in the afternoon. All right, let me get to uh, some of your names. I think I hit up on the majority of flow here. I'll get to um, your names. We could take a peek at, and um, and like I said, there there are setups out there. You guys know biotech has been one of, and I'm not a big biotech guy, but biotech has been one of my favorite groups, only because it didn't really catch fire prior to the Juno news, and it had the best looking activity there. Best looking activity. You had XBI sweepers. Um, you, we, we went over the names. Even the crap of the crap. Even Gilead was seen by. Okay. Even Gilead. You know, Juno, SRPT, Agio, you name it. So I still think there's juice there. I really do. I still think there's juice there. Uh, ABBV. How about that ABBV? God. And that was off earnings, huh? What an animal. That was crazy. Crazy. So, you know, you try to be a little more selective. Post earnings, the flow is going to be a lot more important. And we'll see. Hopefully, we get some sell-offs. Because uh, a lot of these things have really run like a banshee into it. Uh, all right, let's get to go. Win, win is tough here. Win is tough. Uh, I think the best, I mean, what I would do is let the action settle down, let this settle down here, okay, whether it bounces or not from here. I would like it to go dead. You know, there was a lot of action there on Friday. Um, you had Algo put sweepers that fired right off the news that scored in this thing. Um and then there was some there were some call blocks there. We'll see in open interest how clean they were. I don't trust them, but we'll see. Uh, and I want to see this thing go quiet and then pay attention to the flow. Right now, I think, and there wasn't too much sweeper activity there on the call side Friday. I think people just they're unsure. You know, in this day and age, I mean, look what's going on. You know, this thing usually. A lot of times we get brushed aside. Oh, it's my wife, blah, blah, blah. These things really get to a boiling point now where it could weigh short term on this thing. Uh, so I would just be careful. I would just be careful. Uh, there's other spots to look at. If you listen, if you like the win or you're thinking about the win, the other casinos, I think, offer a safer spot. No? If you like the win, I mean, Las Vegas Sands, well, it came back on Friday, but, you know, you had some weakness there. If it weighs on Las Vegas Sands, I would look there. So I just, I'd be careful with things like that. Yeah, listen, if you're going to play options, you put in what you're willing to lose and you're okay with it. You know what I mean? You could take a shot, a shot that way. But I, I'm talking about off the flow. Tough read right now. Tough read. Uh, all right. Uh, Jim is saying, can you take a look at Amazon? I had the three tens expiring yesterday, sold them on Tuesday back for next week's four, 1400. I mean, Amazon, I think these things all basically Jim, what they're doing is, and we, how many times have we spoke about this when you have Netflix or one of the first companies come out, knock the ball out of the park with earnings, you get this rush into all of them, you know? That's what basically we saw last week. They all were under-owned, if you can believe it, because of how much liquidity is out there. 
you know, because of how much demand for stocks for the market is right now. When you have a quarter like Netflix, if these things haven't been on fire already, they're going to come rush right into these things. So I think you'll still see the momentum there until this is, I think, a day to day thing with earnings. You know, if one of the big names come out and they disappoint, you may weigh on every, you know, of all the other ones. You know, so I mean, we're going into a big week here. It's a big week. You got some big names out there, earning wise. Yeah, exactly. This week is going to be big, Jim. So, you know, a lot of the easy money has been made with these things. You know, a lot of the easy money has been made. Um, and here, you know, you're navigating earnings, leaving runners, that sort of thing uh, with some of these hot fang tech names. You know what I mean? Uh, I think post earnings, I, you guys probably heard me mention this last week. What what I think changes in this market after this quarter, I think that rotation sector to sector thing we've been seeing, you know, how quickly we, we forget. Remember coming into this year, what we were seeing is biotech will run for two days. Then they'll take their money out of there, go into financials. They would be hot for a couple days. Then they'd go into tech. Remember they were going from sector to sector to sector. That's what I think um, we'll see a lot more of post earnings. Now, the new year rolled over. The last thing we thought was they'd buy everything. We thought there may be even a chance they sell everything, but they bought everything. They bought everything across the board from oil to tech to banks. I mean, look at the banks just in melt up mode there. You know? So that's what I think is likely to happen. Um, we start seeing some profit taking in sectors. And I think the first ones to come in, then money will start rotating back into those. They'll let, you know, the hot sectors breathe. Because right now across the board, you got every sector outside of utilities just scorched. You know, and listen, that can last through earnings. but I don't see it going much beyond that without some of these things breathing. And then we get that sector rotation thing. So again, I, I think the moral of the story here is with these big guns where all the momentum is, um, it's going to be a day to day thing, especially this week with earnings on some of these big boys. Uh, and we'll see what they look like, you know, and, and keep an eye on some of these names that sell off on earnings like Texas instruments, like Xilinx, you know, if you see flow there, there might be opportunities there. Uh, let's get to a couple other names. Baba Brent, you know, same thing there. Again, there's not much I can tell you about Baba uh, that you may not already know. The good thing is you had, you're coming off a breather there. I think this is why these things got hot because you're coming off this. You know what I mean? You, this is not where this thing's coming off a parabolic move. You're coming off a little rest where people got shaken out of it and then are just rushing back into this. So, again, I think Baba, they'll play the trade up till earnings. There'll be dips if you get some disappointments and other things along the way. But I think the juice will stay there probably till uh, they release numbers. And that's like the JD, too. You could put the JD in that category now. This is the new and improved JD. This is not your old JD, you know? So, uh, you know what? I mean, Brent, I think you got a trade opportunity there on dips if we see flow. But these are these are all names that you already want to be in. I know people don't want to hear that because a lot of people aren't. They've taken profits, you know? You really don't want to get into the mode of buying the same name over and over and over at higher levels. You can get away with that with the market we're in right now, but you're not going to get away with that longer term and you get into bad habits. You know, and what I mean by that is you buy, you know, Amazon at, you know, 1100 and then you're taking profits at 1200, but then you're buying it back at 1250 just because. You know, if you liked Amazon, why don't you just stay in it? If you're in calls, roll them out. 
take some profit, roll them out. You have some more time, you know, take some more time. You don't want to get in the habit of buying the same name up at higher levels without any breather. You understand? If Amazon comes in now and you get a little breather, so a little bit of consolidation, that's a different story. But climbing the ladder, that's a bad habit to get in. You can get away with it now, especially over the short term. You're looking to flip it, ride the momentum. Uh, but swing trading, position trading, uh, that, that becomes a problem. Here's why, very quickly. Why does it become a problem? Okay. You were better off being in that initial position. You would have had a huge cushion, right? You would have been sitting on nice profits. And as opposed to trading the name continuously at higher levels, when you get caught, you're going to give back a chunk of your profits. And inevitably, you will get caught. If you continue to do that, you're going to get caught, right? As opposed to just owning your position at a reference 1100 in Amazon, it's up at 1400. There's a pull. You're only giving back some of your profits. You know what I mean? You got a ton of cushion. So, you know, if you're looking to flip it, uh, that's a different story. You, know, you can, right now, you could ride the wave on anything there. But you just don't want to make a habit out of that. That's that's basically um, what I'm getting at. Uh, Comcast, it's been the same story there, Jordan. Comcast, there's still, you know, I mean, the majority of flow has been rolling out, uh, but they tattoo leaps, as you know. It still looks good. There's nothing, you know, nothing like I can say about it that that's any different um, than what we've been talking about for several weeks now. You know, would I... In, Take an initial position up here, probably not, you know. Um, but if you're in it, you might as well continue to ride the wave there. The flow is still bullish. All these things, you know, look strong. I tell you, one candidate that would look great for sweeper activity. I hope it hangs out till after earnings. I'm hoping is this Disney. This thing is ripe. Um for some activity and a, and a bust out of this, you know? So we'll see what happens again. You're going to have earnings there and we'll see what it looks like after that. Uh, tap. There was some action in tap. What was it, a block? I saw or something like that on Friday. Um, I don't know when earnings are, uh, Dean, do you know where earnings are in tap? I mean, like Budweiser, um, it can catch action from time to time. Size, uh, I would keep an eye on that aggressive activity coming into that uh, a name like that. But again, earnings, that's what I would pay attention to most. When's that, you know? Otherwise, you know, she looks, she looks decent. She looks decent. There's some flow there, right? I see what you see. I'm on your page. It's just, Navigating earnings, if you have a, if you know when earnings are, it's going to help a lot. Unless you're willing to hold through, but I see what you see. Looks good. Uh, Jordan saying he's got April calls, so you got a little bit of time there. Again, find you know, figure out when earnings are and uh, plan accordingly. But does look good. I would look. Um, when's earnings? Last two weeks. Last two weeks of when? Last two weeks of April? Oh, you got the February calls. Yeah. So, you know, just take a peek when earnings. I would keep an eye on further activity there. If they like it, they'll come back. Tap earnings 214, Maria saying. Thank you, Maria. So you got you could have earnings coming up here. You may get a little lift into the number. Yeah, 214, Marisa. So, and then if you get a, put it this way, if you get any weakness on earnings, I would definitely pay attention to the flow there. Definitely, no doubt about it. I like I like the setup there. I definitely like the setup there. Uh, What else we got? Brew, I, I saw flow and brew once throughout my whole career. 
was actually a nice winner. I haven't seen uh, flow since. You know, obviously it doesn't catch too much flow. Um, the the Pepsi we know, right? The Pepsi has had flow looking a lot better. Um, I think the the problem with Pepsi was just the spot. We spoke about that. You're gonna get this grind tire. You know what I mean? She looks good. Seeing more activity in good shape. That's another thing I'm hoping to see. Maybe some of these like defensive type names with some action. We saw a little bit in Kimberly Clark. That was a that was a trade in a day, by the way, which you don't expect out of that. Did you see this move in Kimberly Clark off that sharp activity? What a move. What a move. So I'm hoping, you know, exactly like your cat, you know, maybe some of the defensive names and stuff like that that look like this start to see some action um, as opposed to names that look like good, good old Netflix. I still can't get over these things. What's this thing up? Like 60%? In, in this year uh mkc caught some action friday maria that's probably why you're bringing it up they also were the benefit if i remember correctly of chatter in the space m a chatter in um what the hell's the name one of those names caught some action they all got hot late in the afternoon all the food names this is food right or no This is not food? What is this? MC. Is there another one? MCK? Let me see. MCK? Oh, Maria saying they're food and spices. Jim? Yeah, they are food, Jim. Yeah, Maria, I there was chatter in the name. The reason why I remember... There was some sweeper activity, as you know, early on uh, was strong. And then all of a sudden in the afternoon, there was chatter in the sector and it exploded. So that's what they were probably uh, playing there. What was the name? Who caught chatter in the group Friday? This is McCormick. No, there was somebody, they all, all these names got hot late in the day. Yeah, Jim, you got, uh, that's the two, MKC, MCK. Let me try, I'm trying to think, my brain's fried these days. Uh, whatever it was, there was chatter in the group. Maria, I'll hit you up on Twitter if uh, I discover it, I'll send you the, uh, the link to it. Uh, but that's what they were probably playing, and... You know, they look good. The food names, um, the food names have been ridiculous. You know, some of them have been really how about like Kroger? Did you S Y Y was it S Y Y? I don't think so. I don't think so. Kroger too got hot off the chatter. There was somebody in there caught chatter. I'll find it. I'll post it on uh, Twitter. Uh, but that's yeah, that's all oh, there was a little bit of flow in these things early on. That's probably what they were, uh, what they were playing. Yeah, Kroger has had chatter news. Kroger's been red hot. Uh, some big time action there as well. You know, I mean, look at that move. That thing's been powerful. Powerful. Let me scroll back because I missed a couple of you guys on the names. Hold on. Um, Caterpillar. Yeah, Caterpillar. You had the earnings but you know same thing i mean look you know and and they get one little dip and they buy it up they buy it up right so that's the names that look like this going into the number yeah it's worth uh waiting for that yeah caterpillar there was um, a little bit of uh, put action, but that was pr numbers protection. Um, but other than that, there's been some decent looking sweeps in Caterpillar. Nothing uh, of recent that really caught my eye, uh, but I'll start to pay attention um, 
I'll start to pay more attention now post earnings. Um, but it gets tougher, a little bit tougher here. You know what I mean? It gets a little bit tougher here. Unless this thing could come in and, and relax a little bit. These things have just been on fire, on fire. You know, look at even U.S. Steel. Remember how tough of a trade for those of you who have been around? Remember this thing when she was catching all that activity? This thing was the star of flow, meaning the topic, for like three weeks straight because a ton of action came in, and this thing was all the way down here, all kidding aside, all the way down here. Okay? And it was just such a tough trade. You couldn't buy this thing on a green day, we used to say, because every time you'd buy it on a green day, it'd pull. But all in all, was trending higher. And now look at this now. And I got news for you. Okay, this is just my gut. There may most likely will be a breather at some point. I, I just can't see these things not continue in other words not continue to go higher longer term with the economy the way it is right now you're telling me we're going through the biggest one of the biggest bull markets one of the biggest boom this is what you this is the spot you want to be looking at right now now granted that's what they've been doing you know that's where we're seeing a ton of steel flow but they just broke out you know these things haven't been running for years. You understand what I'm saying? Or am I confusing you guys? In other words, unlike tech that's been in a bull market for how long now? The steel names couldn't get out of their own way. So there could be a longer term move here out of all these things. That's why a lot of people are bullish on just the commodity space in general this year. Because they haven't been in this full-fledged bull market. And if you got a boom worldwide economically, these are the things to, that benefit from it. So that's why I think you're getting that parabolic move and, you know, the Caterpillar, powerful Boeing, you know, now the steel catching on, you know, Freeport, FCX. All the stuff that was dead, those defense names are out of control. Yeah, Lockheed. Um, what's that one? I see, honestly, I see them land a big contract every Friday like clockwork, every week. North Northwork uh, Grumman, what's their symbol? NOC. Every Friday, like clockwork, they land some huge defense contract. It's It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now look at this thing. Incredible moves. Incredible. You know, who else? You got General Dynamics. That's been a little more uh, choppier, but she busted out. Yeah, the <laughs> the ITA. You know, I, I told you guys the story with my father-in-law. He won't leave, he won't let me live it down. Basically, I told him to wait for a pullback before he buys it. That was back in like the spring or whatever, and I get cursed out every day. Look at this move. I look at this move. So he blames me now, you know. LLL. Um, this was another one. There was one day of weakness. I'm trying to, I can't even see it on these charts anymore. The one day there was a it couldn't have been that. There was a little pullback. You know, this name doesn't catch too much sweeper activity. And then, boom, right into the red, there was a sweeper one day. And that's it. They don't let these things breathe for one day. It really is a remarkable thing. So that, that's what I'm saying. When you get some sort of breather in these things, the steel names, you know what I mean? When there's some legitimate consolidation, I think that's... That's where the home runs are going to come from. You know, you had the initial activity, the initial entry. That was where they first caught the action, right? And then you get this leg. They broke out, and you get this huge move. Now, whenever, as you know, it's, they continue to push higher until there's some selling, you'll get a pullback, a little correction, a little breather, 
And I think the flow that comes into there, into that spot, is you're going to be your second big entry there. You know, wherever it may be. Um, but who knows, you know, how long they push higher till we see that. That's the problem. That's been the problem in this market. By the dip. What dip? There's no dip. Yeah, right? There's no dip, man. Buy the dip, they say. And again, I, that's why I think the opportunity is in the stuff that is stuck in consolidation. A lot of people are shying away from that stuff, thinking it's dead money. It's dead money now. But you see a little sweeper activity come in, giving you a heads up that these things may be ready. You know, and that's where you get that reaction, like J, uh, with the JD, the steel names, you know, the Dow DuPont. You know, the rest of this stuff, it's like, all right, it, it, it feels like musical chairs, doesn't it? It feels like musical chairs. It feels like, all right, ride these things, you know, get find that chair until the music stops type of thing. Where, you know, you can catch some big moves. Um yeah, the sector rotation, that's that's my favorite type of market, Jordan, cuz I feel like I have an edge in that game, in that market, you know? This market now, it's like again, you see everybody patting themselves on the back all over social media. Like give me a break, you know? Like there's some guru, "Oh yeah, here's my forecast. The market's going to be higher tomorrow." Like give me a break, will you please? You know, the sector rotation is is where I feel like I, I, I feel like I feel confident because I, I the flow is telling me something different than everything else that's going on in the market. Right now, it's just, you know, you could get lucky on anything. And that's another thing you see. I, you know, I'm not trying to knock anybody, but you'll see. I'll give you an example. I'm not going to mention names, but there's even people on television, you know, touting big blocks that are tied to stock. You know, that, you know, I sit back, I, I know it's not a bet. It's tied to stock. But you know what? With the market the way it is, it's probably going to go higher anyway. Right? You know? Well, you got people out there talking about size roles to make a play on, like position adjustments, where it's a form of profit taking for these big guys. And people are talking like it's super aggressive activity. Like I hear somebody put the label aggressive buyer on a roll for crying out loud. Uh, but this market, you can um, you could get away with it. Yeah, well, that, that's the thing. Tim hit the nail on the head. I, I've been doing this 20 plus years, and to this day, I'm convinced nobody has a clue of when this ends or any of that stuff. So that's why I guess I laugh. <laughs> Brent, I'm not I'm not saying anything, Brent. Um to this day, I haven't found anybody who can predict markets. Listen, the gurus are bullish. As soon as they go bearish, they won't look like a guru anymore. Trust me. You'll see that. You know, everybody who's a guru, who, everybody who looks like a guru to you now is bullish in this bull market. That's all it is. Some will get, you know, some will find some bigger winners step in shit get lucky but as long as you're that's the thing i think i've learned from my experience in flow as long as you don't try to get cute and do the things you're supposed to do you're gonna find success you know you need a little luck to find you know to find a little more success than maybe you would like but as long as you're not shorting a full-fledged bull market trying to call tops you know, as long as you don't think you're smarter than the actual market itself in price, the smartest minds out there, you see them. These guys are huge. They can't make calls. You know, they can't make calls. on. They can't predict the overall market. You know, they're, 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 they're at the spot they're at because they are intelligent. They know this game, and they can win more than they lose. That's basically why they're at where they're at. Not because they can predict. Yeah, you see guys like Ackman. These guys have losers, right? And as soon as they mismanage, right, as soon as that risk management goes out the window, they do something wrong, 
like Ackman in AK in um, VRX, they get bit in the ass just like we would. It's no different. It's no different. It's no different. Yeah, he's had, you know, he's had a, several losers where he got overconfident, you know, went outside his box. It just happens. You know, even guys like Gunlock. I mean, the guy's a sharp dude. But, you know, he went from his little niche in the bond markets and thought he could come into stocks and call tops. The market taught him a nice little lesson. You know, Citron, same thing. They came out thinking they can short you know, things in the bull market and go on CNBC, pump them and make money every time. Now, how many times did they get bit in the ass on the short side? They had nothing. They don't have no crystal ball. Ackman laying off 20 per Yeah, he got nicked up. He'll be all right, though. He'll be all right. You know, he's got experience. He's been playing the game. He knows what he's doing. He just got out. He got outside his box, man. He got outside his realm. That's it could happen in this game. You get cocky. You get cocky. You know who was a cowboy too? Remember the Chesapeake CEO who committed suicide? Wow, what a degenerate he was. What was his name? You guys know who I'm talking about. He was never satisfied, that dude. Roll the dice, made Bill McClellan. That's it. Woo. Roll the dice, made billions, and just instead of just doing what he needed to do, preserve what he had. He just continued to roll the dice. He's nuts. Yeah, Jim, you know, it's easy. Listen, it's easy to take a position, go on to TV and pump your position and look smart, right? A couple of times. But then eventually when you look to go to the well so many times, the market will get you. The market gods don't like that. The market gods are a fickle bunch. They don't like that shit. Excuse my French. Yeah, McClellan drove into a bridge. I mean, think about or think about the life that guy had. You know, the name, the reputation that guy had. And he ended up killing himself because he rolled the dice again. It backfired. He got caught in shenanigans and how, how stupid. But this game will drive you nuts, man. It'll drive you nuts. You never, you know what it is? You're never happy in this game. That's one thing you got to control. You're never satisfied. You start making some money, you want more. You start finding some consistency, you're not making enough. You know what I mean? Instead of just finding a way to find some consistency in a game you probably love, and hopefully can trade for a living, you know, do for a living, or even do on the side, but you're passionate about, instead of being happy with that, you start right away counting the money, counting the money. What? I'm only up 45%? These guys are bragging about 200% gains this year. Uh, what am I doing wrong? It's gambling, man. It's gambling. So that's, that's why it's, you guys have heard me. I'm not, you know, I'm only preaching from a reason because I've seen many, many players around me. And that's the one thing that I really am proud of with myself is that I'm still around. You know what I mean? I've seen so many and with a ton of more talent as far as trading is concerned. A ton of more talent that just didn't do the things they needed to do and aren't around anymore because of greed. You know, because of greed. And now they're probably looking back and saying, you know, now they're probably doing labor and saying, wow, you know, I just, if I did what I needed to do, I could have been playing a game I love for a living. But instead... I got good. Yeah, I mean, listen, Jordan, it's there's this is the problem. You know, there are a lot of people, especially on social media, that'll tell you a specific way of doing things. And 
think it's like a blanket statement that will apply to everybody out there. It, it's not. It's not. Okay. The only blanket statement that applies to every player in this game is risk management. That's it. You know, stop loss may be for you. It may not be. Like I said, if you're playing in the options world, I think honestly, stop loss is one of the most difficult things to do. You you got to really know what you're doing. You know, if you're trading equity, I think it's very it's crucial. You know, but more importantly, it's the risk management aspect. You know, allowing yourself that if you have more winners than losers, you're going to finish in the green. It's that simple. If you can orchestrate a plan that allows that to happen, that's the starting point. You know, that's the starting point, and then you build from there. And then you can tinker with that, you know, as you go, depending on your strategy and stuff like that. But that's why you hear, you know, risk management thrown out so much. And, you know, a lot of players don't know what, what the hell that means or what to do with it. But in my definition of risk management is, is simply that. You know, some people may only look to win at 40%. Uh, but their winners are a hell of a lot bigger than their losers, so it allows them to make money. Or I know a lot of people are just dead 50-50. 50-50. You know what I mean? And they're looking just to win more than they lose, and that's what gets them in the green. So anyway, moral of today's webinar is don't try to get too cute. Whatever you do, don't try going out there shorting things, especially if you're new to that side of the game, okay? Um, a lot of people throw out the tops, and I'm getting short and all that stuff. It's easier said than done. I don't know anybody, anybody who has shorted bull markets and has survived to tell the story. And before this bull market comes to a complete end, anybody you know who's short will be gone. Mark my words, they won't exist anymore, okay? If you're a little uncomfortable with what's going on, size down. Size down. What's the, what's the big deal? I don't understand. Why not size down? Size down to the point where you don't care much if that's the case. At least as this, if the market continues higher, you'll benefit from it, right? Better than not benefiting at all. And then, you know, and then we'll see once, once we do get some sort of breather, uh, we'll see, especially, I think it's earnings after earnings, we'll start to get some of the truer colors of this market. This is now, I told you what flow is doing. They're just throwing money at everything. Okay. It's not big money. It's not huge money, but they are just throwing money at everything and anything. And they've been doing it. They didn't just start now so we could say, oh, maybe this is the start of something big. They've been doing this. And you could see, look, look at this here. Look at this. You could see on this board here. You know, look at the spy here. I, I mean, this spy, and they'll be put buying. There's protection here and there. So I don't think the puts are going to tell us anything until, you know, tops are a process type thing, until we're actually already in the process of topping. Then we'll, we'll see a, a turn in the flow. But, I mean, the sporadic put buying that we see is just them protecting. And you could see it in the rest of the flow. They're throwing money at everything else. This is SPY, by the way. Okay? This is yesterday, Friday. Look, see? One put buy in there. Look at all this. Okay? Look at this. Yeah, all sweepers. You can see even some small amounts there because they're cheap premium. And, uh, you know, you can see the numbers. Look, two, $228, $300 calls, $15,000 sweep. Here are the 290s, $223, 290s, $71,000. Yeah. And, again, these are like target prices. These They get a double. They flip them. They roll up. They roll out. And they just keep pounding away. But, I mean, look, this is 123. All that was just back to 123 there a couple days ago. You know, again, sporadic put buyer there. 
So you see what the overall flow looks like. It's nuts. Nuts. And that DIA, the diamonds, you know what they've been doing there. Now, this doesn't catch much flow. Look at this guy yesterday. April 270s. Look at the size of that thing. This has seen the better action. You know, and they're going out. Uh, where's the, uh, oh, I could scroll down. There's other ones where they went out to June. Here's the ones in June. Oops. Uh, nice line there. Nice line. But you can see. All right. So they're, they're riding the wave. Very simply put, that's what they're doing. This, if this, you see what happens? And this is what I'm trying to explain. And then we'll wrap it up here. What I'm trying to explain is, oh, come on. Hold on. When this batch goes under, it couldn't give two poops. You understand? If the market rolls over and this batch of buying goes under, they're just giving back a little bit of profit from all this. So I Again, that's the mentality I think you want to take here. You know, if you were, if you haven't been, if this is new to you and you haven't been taking advantage of the bull market, obviously it's a little bit different, right? But at the same time, I, I think you shouldn't size up here. You know, but if you've been and take in this market and it's over the years and been making some money, you take an amount in your head that you're comfortable giving back if you're playing options. Or even if you're playing equity, it doesn't matter what you're willing to give back. And that's what you're looking to risk here to try to ride the wave and make some more money. And then that allows you when you get that pull and everybody's caught all in, sized up, suicidal, you got some ammo, right? You got some ammo. So that's, that's the approach I think you have to take here. All right, guys, anybody have any last questions before we run? Just let me throw this out for some of you who are new, wallstreetjesus.com. If you do have questions, um, the, my best bet, if this is all foreign to you, wise guy activity, sweepers, all that jazz, click on, go to wallstreetjesus.com, strategy sec section, and simple quick blogs will answer all the questions you probably have. Sweeps. How do you use this information? We went over a couple examples earlier on. Um, Yang, the squeezometer is neutral. Neutral. But again, that's extreme short term. Okay. As far as the intermediate term sentiment out there, it's bullish, but it's supposed to be bullish. It's supposed to be bullish. We're in a bull market. I think people are comparing a lot of that stuff to, you know, 2015, 2016. The market was useless as far as a trend. You know, any little pullback, you had to put the call skyrocket. Now, in a bull market, you could see, you know what's another sign? The inflows. You see the money coming in? Okay, there's money pouring into the market right now. That happens in bull markets. It's not a sign of a top, a blow up immediately. Okay, it's a sign maybe things need to cool down. They need to shake the tree a little bit. But that's that's all normal in bull markets. Um, so yeah, you go to Wall Street Jesus, the strategy section here, and uh, you got a couple of quick blogs you can run through and you get a better understanding, a couple of trade examples and how it's used and stuff like that. Uh, also, oh, a couple of things. If you're interested, we got a three-day trial. Uh, throughout the sweep series, no credit card. Okay, this is the trade-off we made. No credit card required, but you're not allowed to post anything in the room because we were getting a lot of riffraff in there that would post nonsense, and it's just useless. Okay, so no credit card. You get access to all of this in here. Audio, video, I broadcast throughout the whole market session, giving play-by-play -play with commentary, that stuff. Um Okay, that's part of the free trial. Then you get 50% off the first month. That's the whole package, including private Twitter. Okay, private Twitter included in the package. If you're interested in just private Twitter, 
go to the products page or you can get the link off my personal Twitter page, but go to the product section, private Twitter. And uh, for $59.99 a month, you get access to private Twitter. All right. So private Twitter, basically the flow, uh, some open interest stuff, uh, some sentiment stuff, pre and post market. The biggest thing that's missing out of private Twitter is the audio video that people find extremely uh, useful. All right. Anybody have any questions or we're all good here? Uh, Jim is saying they got a nice card in Gulfstream. Yeah, I might I might have to hit the uh, hit the ponies today. I haven't in a while. I'm ready to open up like a TVG account and keep myself occupied. Uh, can you ca can you check out XOP really quick? Remember some size you posted? Yeah, XOP, the flow's been bullish there for uh, a bit. That XLE, OIH, they all have been bullish. Um, yeah, the, the problem, again, you've had a little bit of a move higher, so may need to breathe a little bit. Uh, but still, they still look good. They still look good. You know, XOP, XLE, and OIH, all court activity. Yeah, you know, like everything else, the oils have been hot. You got the weak dollar there. As long as that hangs around there, you're going to see some bullish strength there. Um, but these, all these things could pull back and still look good and still be okay. You know, you just, you got to take that into account when you're buying up here, any of this stuff. Thank you, Dean, for the kind words. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Like I said, you have any questions, you know where to find me. All right, or go to wallstreetjesus.com and you'll find a lot of help there. Be good, everybody. Enjoy the weekend. Should be an interesting week next week. A lot of earnings, so get some rest. Should be a lot of fun. Be good, everybody.